Hey there guys, welcome <coughs> to another live session here at Genesis Marvel. Sorry about playing uh, cameraman there. Uh, just a little recap, last week um, we did our Declan on the Wellington. Uh, just to, to remember, I have sealed it in with a gloss coat, left it overnight to nicely dry so as um, this is all good for whatever weathering we want to do to it now the decals was actually quite easy there wasn't many ease there wasn't many at all um, to do on this one which was which was rather nice if you don't like your decklin so tonight what we're going to be doing is uh, it's a lot of little bits and bobs here and there getting these final stages done um, stuff like natural metal finishes oils um, enamel washes um, all sorts of little little goodies that we can sort of cover tonight uh, just remember um, get onto the comment section any questions and answers that you want or any shout outs what builds you're doing um, and i'll do my best to answer them um, throughout this live session so let's get back in to the wellington so i've just got to play cameraman there right then first off what i want to sort of look at um, is some natural metal finishes All right because what we've got here is we've got our little engines just here which just need to go onto the model um, now when it comes to natural metal finishes there is lots of ways you can go about it but i do really like the uh, mr metal color range I, I do like these because um the way you go about it you can basically sort of spray get a nice natural metal finish and weather it it all at the same time so it's a it's a good finish and it's a little bit lazy but not as um just easy shall we say not lazy really um, you've got to give this stuff a good good shape because it does sediment at the bottom right and you want to get it all off the bottom i'm using actually um 214 which is their dark iron it goes down really really dark but um it comes up so lovely once you've done it um so that's been shaken quick note as well this has already been uh, i've just sprayed some black on there whacked on a bit of a gloss right and that just makes this a perfect um, surface for natural metal finishes because natural metal finishes uh, a black primer always a good one if you're glossy it makes it even more um, natural metal finishy so with a airbrush right and actually it's good to have a kitchen paper towel on standby I'm just going to move the model out the way because we don't want to get paint on the model. Let's just open this up. Right. And it's nice and thin, so there's no need to go off and do 50-50 this. It's just pure. Pour this in neat. But it is rather, rather thin, and you do sometimes get a little bit of a, a dribble. So just clean that up. Right. Also, with this kind of paint... Um, I do believe it's lacquer based, right? So you're probably going to want to get face masks on, extractor fans on, windows open, all that kind of good stuff. Plus, you want to whack your PSI down. So I'm just bringing my PSI, um, ooh, maybe like 12 PSI-ish. You want to bring it down really, really nice and low. Right, I'm just going to test on my kitchen paper towel, see how it's spraying through. It looks like we've got a, maybe a slight bit of a blockage. I'm just going to wipe the end of my needle. Hopefully that will sort it. That's not going too good actually. I might need to... Oh, there we go. Something was blocking it. It's just blasted out now. Right, so let's maybe bring you in a little bit closer so you could see this. All right, well, actually... A new, a new kitchen paper towel would be good because we don't want to get this all over the place. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to nicely now spray this in a dark iron. Which again is, I might need to just pop the air pressure up just a little bit because I think my airbrush is just struggling to pop this out. So I'm maybe going up to... 
Actually, no, I am actually around about 12 psi. Just I must have accidentally knocked it down too much. Right, and then we're just gonna just do the usual nice flight misty coat. So I hope this is not doing too well out my airbrush. We may be doing an airbrush clean because it's not doing too well. Let's give it a give it a try. Wanna try and keep it a nice misty coat. Although it's a little bit harder. I think my airbrush needs cleaning. It does need cleaning. But we are live, so I'm gonna try and sort of soldier on and try and deal with it. But then again, it might not be so bad to sort of show you cleaning the airbrush out. This really is not having it. So I'm probably going down thicker than I normally would and would want to. But as I say, we all always want to soldier on. Right, we've got enough paint on this now. Right, I'll do the other one off camera because my airbrush is playing up a bit. And hopefully you could just see, it's looking actually rather black. Um, it'll look very sort of matte and almost like dusty-ish, right? Um, and it's not looking at all like natural metal finishes, but we'll just leave this now to dry for a bit. And while we do that, we wanna be um, cleaning out our airbrush, which uh, doing, uh, with this stuff, it's a bit different. I'm just gonna blast this out, what's left. It's a little bit different with natural metal finishes because um, we're talking lacquer base paints. Um, so let's just get out. I do have some actual lacquer base cleaner paint somewhere in my drawer here. Where's it gone? I suppose it's not such a big deal. I need to actually just use cellulose thinners. Although I did have some <coughs> specifically for this, but um, cellulose thinners just as good. This basically cleans up absolutely anything. All right, so what we want to do, all right, we just pour this in. All right, and this is going to be pretty sort of pongy being cellulose thinners. Um, <coughs> Now you want to sort of be extra extra careful as well because um, we're using cellulose thinners, right? It's um, quite harmful, you know. It does smell really bad. It does give you headaches and stuff if you breathe it in. So doing the whole googling gurgling trick, just really be light with it because you know we don't want to be pulling so far back that it all spurts up. Because I mean, get this blasted in your eyes and it's gonna hurt, right? I'm just lightly gurgling this up, all right, just like so, nice and lightly. And now I'm going to tip this upside down and give it a clean colour cup end, not through the airbrush, uh, not through the nozzle end, right, because it could be bits. And you probably want to do this about twice. There we go. Do it about twice, give it a gurgle. And that should have cleaned up most of it and it you know brings all the stuff that's actually down here in the nozzle end gets it all cleaned up and then again tip it upside down and clean it out this end right and then you can probably start blasting it through which um, again you want to have your extractor fans on and everything because what you are in essence doing here is um, atomizing cellulose thinners and this is where if you breathe it in it's not going to be very good so you want to be you know having all your face masks and that on all right then what i like to do um, because i use this airbrush for i've just used my i mean i always use this for like my acrylic paints 
Um, I've used it with cellulose thinners and these lacquer based paints. What I like to do is, is what we've got in here is like we've got probably little bits of residue of the cellulose thinners. That's not going to go down well with acrylic paint. So I like to get uh, my acrylic sort of um, airbrush cleaner and then I'm basically cleaning out the cellulose thinners now. So my airbrush is, you know, starting to think um, acrylic based paints again. So I'm just gurgling that up. It doesn't take much just to sort of try and clean out the cellulose thinners really. Right, and then we can just blow that through. All right, so we want to be doing that. Let's put our guard back on. Um, I'm just going to read some questions and answers if there is any. There we go, nothing really there. I know mean, there's a lot of comments about me not cleaning my airbrush, which is very, very bad of me, I know. I uh, should have cleaned it, but uh, you know, I was eating my dinner, sorry. <laughs> so next up, all right, this should be dry enough now. It doesn't take very long to dry. Um, and what we want to do, getting out uh, any old rag, right, let's bring you in not too close let's bring you in on this sorry about the biker outside and what we can do maybe take this off is you just give it a little bit of a rub with the rag and immediately you will start to see this natural metal finish start to form and we're basically just wiping off this dusty surface and it just leaves behind this absolutely gorgeous gorgeous bit of natural metal finish which is what I absolutely love about this paint as you can see looking absolutely smashing there you don't have to worry about the back because we're not going to see the back but it's just nice to clean it up anyway and this is what I like about these paints you get this Na lovely natural metal finish as you can see looks nice and natural metal finishy but because we're sort of rubbing what's on the surface and we can't exactly get into the nooks and crannies you do end up with this little bit of like a, a black dustiness going on there which in 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 the same sense not only we've got a natural metal finish but we've also it's basically been weathered as well because all the nooks and crannies have got all this black dusty stuff in there and that is absolute smashing um, no real effort no need to do any more weathering although we could do some more weathering um, which I just might do a little bit maybe later on so we may come back to that um, next up is our propellers just here they're all they've all been nicely sprayed black let's just zoom out a little bit all been nicely sprayed sprayed back black um, they've got a nice gloss coat on there uh, what you want to do, um, well, there, there is a couple ways of getting our yellow tips on here. The one is where you dip it, but I don't find that is um, looks the best because um, you end up with a blob of paint on the end. Um, you don't get such a sharp line. I know it's kind of quick and easy, but I personally don't prefer that. So we want to mask this up now. Right, maybe sort of on the back of your hand, you know, just get so it gets the tackiness away from it so it's not too tacky. All right, and what I like to do is we just sort of mass that across there, and then what I like is to just fold the one over, and all you gotta do is just fold it so it's perfectly lined up, right with the opposite side then you should have it absolutely equal either side also I like to leave a bit of this tacky end here so that we can sort of peel it off a little bit easier I'm just going to do this three times All right just checking any messages
And now we're all good. Uh, the tricky part is sort of trying to guesstimate how big the tip is. Uh, but if it generally sort of looks in the Mark 1 eyeball, generally okay, then it generally is. And again, just fold this over, line it up with the opposite side, and you should have a matching bit of masking there also. Uh, just remember, next week, next Friday, is the 21st, and that one, we're going to be doing um, a bit of a Christmas special, where I've got a nice couple of giveaways, a couple of kits to give away, and we'll be giving them away live. On the show uh, do tune in for that one next week that looks about right all right now the problem is when spraying yellow yellow normally doesn't have good um, <clears throat> coverage right which um, really, it, it's it's down to cost because um, I don't know if you've ever known this. I'm just going to add some yellow now. I don't know if you've ever known this, but um, when it comes to paints, because they are, um, you buy say, I mean, we've got Vallejo here. Vallejo, uh, I don't know, two pound, two pound ten a pot. But the problem is, is every single pot of paint is going to be that two pound, two pound ten. Right, and the problem is with that, um, some pigments are cheaper than others, some pigments are more expensive. Um, yellow pigments are more expensive, so what you end up with is, in essence, a bit of a, a less quality paint because all the paints are the same price. Um, if you go into like proper, proper, real professional, professional sort of um, um, art stores, you'll see that um, some colors cost more than others although you can get in the same amount and that is just because you know the pigments cost more so this is i mean that's just um, the reason why you know our yellows and you know uh, sometimes reds and stuff you know they've got bad coverage we're going to give it a good shake um, and what we're going to do we're not going to just come in with um yellow straight away because you will be spraying down the yellow constantly um you could be doing like 10 coats because it just really doesn't have good coverage, um, especially on black. You're going to be absolutely forever. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to prime it first. Uh, just a quick, any sort of grey. This is just, um, actually, we'll go for a lighter grey, actually. We'll go for this one, um, which is 276 light grey. Um, it is by Vallejo Modeler. Again, it doesn't matter exactly what grey, just something really, really light. Right, so I'm just giving that a good, good shake. All right, and because this is only a little bit, I'm actually not going to thin this. All right, with Vallejo paints, I mean, you can just about get away with um, spraying them neat. I wouldn't do it on like a whole model, but something like just spraying these tips here, right, it's actually... Um, not so bad because you're only spraying a bit and you're only spraying for a bit you know what? i think that cellulose thinners has cleared my airbrush which is not so bad unless you guys want to see how i sort of clean my airbrush and unblock it just comment and i'll uh, maybe show you yeah, I'm just spraying the tips, this grey. In fact, I'm going to leave this one this side because I want to sort of show you how bad yellow can be and why you really need to do a primer and sort of get rid of the black. Just spraying the excess into my bin. It's taking a bit of time, there we go. Clean it out. Good old airbrush cleaner I, I make my own airbrush clean there is a video on um the ingredients how i make my own airbrush cleaner but um you're more than welcome to like go out and buy pacific ones i do recommend um vallejo's airbrush cleaner actually it is 
one I always used before I started making my own. Because it is one of them things that you use so much of. Um, it can get quite expensive because I'm, I think Vallejo, their airbrush cleaner for like 200 mils is like um, nine pounds ish or something. It, it, it isn't cheap. Whereas if you make your own, it can be really um, cheap to uh, make it yourself. Plus you kind of know what's going, going in there as well. There we go. So I've just gurgled this a few times, cleaned it out. And we're ready to go with the yellow. Now again with the yellow, I'm not gonna um, not gonna thin it down because um, actually, you know, you kind of need it to go down neat. It's got such a not a good coverage to it. Sorry, I'm just you know keeping up with your with your comments. See if there's any questions on there. So I'm going to pour this in neat, and we should get a lot better coverage. All right, maybe let's bring you in so you can sort of see the difference a bit better. Checking my spray pattern. All right, I'm doing a quick spray here, and as you can see, that yellow has almost come out with one coat. If I go to the black here and spray this on, that is just, it's just not doing anything. I mean, it may look like I'm not actually spraying this, but I am. It's just so, so bad to do it. We've got yeah, a bit more than what I've put on there. Hopefully, as you can see, um, so much more of a difference. Whereas this yellow is coming through um, a lot, lot better. All right, so, I mean, you could probably get away with maybe just putting two coats of yellow down. And these should be, should be good. So I'm just going to finish these two propellers. So I'll just finish the other, the third one off camera. Given a quick coat and maybe cut to air, move along to the next one maybe. Try not to forget the leading edges, you know, get at those angles. You don't want some grey sort of rim going around. That's probably a little bit too much. We don't want to have it too wet. If we go too wet near masking tape, the, the paint can sort of seep down the masking tape and then you get like this bleeding going on through the masking tape, which then sort of messes it up a bit for you. So you don't want to be doing that. Just cut into where. And I'm just doing this side. Being careful. If you're not the most competent of sprayers as well, probably a good idea to mask up this centre bit, but um, I'm being careful of not getting over spray onto them. Let's have a closer look at this. Make sure my leading edges are done. This. I'll just cut to air now and draw this off. Right, and then we should be able to just, fingers crossed, we've had no problems. Right, we can just peel this off. like so and we should have a nicely sprayed pepper. So 
being careful not to rip too hard or too fast that we end up ripping up paint. But there you go, propeller with a nice tip on the end. So I'm just gonna leave that and then we can move on to the next thing tonight. So what have we got next? Um, next up, we've got um, some wheels. Just here. I've already sprayed them silver, as you can see. Uh, I'm just going to find the paint. Here we go. Um, I like to use AK um, Interactive's 720, which is rubber tires. All right, I'm just painting these on because it's you know it's really hard to sort of mask up a, a circle on there. So I, I do like to just paint mine on. Now I'm just giving this a really good shake. Now these have got the orange tops, which means, oh no it doesn't, that's Ammo, sorry. Ammo is the one who has the yellow tops, which has the ball bearings in. There we go. So let's just get out something to put our paint on. Right, I'm just going to pour out a nice bit of this. Right, and then what I like to do is I like to sort of thin it down a bit. So a bit of the old um, homebrew thinners, just a bit. And also, I should have some flow, flow improver just here. And this should help the flow of the paint. Because what we want is a paint that's going to have some really good capillary action. Um, what I mean by capillary action is it just flows so nice. Right. You might not have to put in flow improver, but we can just, for now, we just get in our um, home brew and our paint, sort of mix it together to be nice and thin, and then we're just going to see how's it going to flow. And there we go, actually, that without the flow improver. I mean, if you have some problems, you know, use the flow improver. I'm just trying to get you in close. But that has just nicely by touching that it's just flowing around All right so i'm just gonna carry on around with this i'm just touching it and it just flows around that rim so you don't have to paint it All right and there we go so if you've got unsteady hands or anything like that then you can um, let capillary action do it. And then you can simply just paint around it, not having to worry about getting right up to the edge, right? Because the capillary action has done all that work for you. Right, now as you can see, I mean, there's not much coverage going on there, right? But we've done the main sort of painting, right? Because now we could probably have thicker mixtures going on as we do the bigger areas where we haven't got to be um, as careful. Right? But you may have to just play around with it first, getting the right um, mixture when sort of getting that capillary action to go. Right? And then you just get thicker as you go around. Hopefully, as you can see, just here. So that's going to take a couple of coats, um, but it just makes the job a lot easier. Um, and um, you don't have to be so steady and good with doing tiny little paintbrushes. And even if you're good at it, I mean, to get that perfect circle going on there, um, the capillary action just does the job work probably way better than even someone has got a steady hand. So I do like to use that technique and just got to build that up. So that is the wheels. As I say, I mean, we've got lots of little little things going on tonight let's just zoom you back out um, remember if you wanted flow improver you don't have to use Winsor and newton by the way um flow improvers flow improver for acrylic paints um i just like like using Winsor and newton because they are they are pretty good brand and actually while i'm at it i'm going to clean my paintbrush so 
let's throw out another tip for you. Where's it gone? Because these are these are actually the Series Seven Windsor and Newton. Um, it is they are basically one of the best paint brushes you can get in the world. Sable and all that, um, handmade in England. Yeah, they are they are really good and oh, golden demon winners and everything. They all recommend it. Um, I've also got the Masters brush cleaner here and a preserver. I do like to use this stuff. It does keep your brushes nice and clean, and um, it's got like a conditioner in there, so it sort of conditions the um, the hairs on the paintbrush. And these these Windsor and Newtons, I've been using them for years now, and um, I've only had to ever replace one once because of it getting worn out. And oh God, I have had them years and years, right? And I've been using. Um, acrylics, I've been using enamels, um, lacquers, oils, all sorts of types of paints, which I know a lot of people will say, you know, don't use oils and cellulose thinners with your fancy paint brushes, but you know what, if, if you just clean them, you know, pretty much straight after, they, they, they still do last and they're still quite durable. So I'm just sort of giving this a nice little bit of a clean. Um, and then in my pot of water over here, I'll just sort of give it a wash in here. But what I'm doing, I, hopefully you can see, I'm just doing it on the side. I'm not sort of dabbing it down on the bottom because if we dab it down on the bottom, the bristles are just going to like stick up. And we want to keep the bristles, you know, pointing forwards at all time, even with cleaning. I'm right, just give this a, a last little clean over. Right. And I do like to, to leave a bit of the conditioner on the end of the paintbrush because it sort of dries and sort of sticks it into a nice pointy position. Um, so it's always good to look, just leave it a little tad, tad bit on the end of the bristles so when it dries, as I say, it'll um, lock it into place. All right. But it won't be like glue or something, just you know, locks it in. All right, so that's clean. I was checking any questions. Uh, still no questions, but feel free to, to get them in. Um, next up, what have I got next up? Ah, bring in the model now. Because what we're going to do, right, is um, try and sort out our panel lines. I'm going to be doing this, though, with a pin wash. All right, so um, it's not like your you sludge wash kind of thing going on. What I'm going to be using, um, we're going to be using two types actually, because we do have two sort of big differences in colour with this particular model. We have our top side, which I'm going to be using a deep brown. This is, um, 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 what is it? This is Ammo by Mig Jimenez, uh, 1608. Nice deep brown, which is a nice colour for sort of making it look dark and dirty in the recessed panel lines and recessed rivets, right? But because, you know, black is um, kind of like a different way of doing things, I'm going to be going a medium grey, which is 1601. So we're going like a light, really sort of light and dark because we've got the differences um, with using black. And we also want to get some odourless thinners out. Um, I do recommend you use Ammo's own thinners for this kind of stuff as well because um, I know people have said in the past can you use stuff like white spirits or something like that and in all honesty white spirits can react to your paintwork it's normally a stronger solution um, the intensity of these enamel odorless thinners are just right for the job right. although you might think you don't get as much in they, they they're still you know perfect for the job really this is a bit of an old one well, I'm just going to get out a nice uh, paintbrush nice and thin bring you in uh, to treble zero so it's nice and pointy because this is as I say a pin wash got some on the end of my brush just in we've got a um, panel line just here and if you kind of touch it um, it does flow um, which is what you want, 
right, which is what's so good about using enamels and it's so thin we just touch these um, recessed panel lines and recessed rivets right, and it just flows down really really nice right. okay you might end up with maybe a little bit of a mess I mean you might see like a little dot here or a dot there that's no big deal there is another stage to this process all right and actually i think it helps with the weathering as well with the next stage of the process all right so i'm just keep on dipping i think i just want to show you a bit because i mean this is this is a little bit sort of a time consuming process all right so i don't want to spend yeah, and now we're just going around dotting this whole model on live because it's a bit boring to watch. All right, the other thing about this one also like is if you've got raised areas as well, we've got these. Shall I try and bring you in a bit closer? There we go. Well, we've even got like these raised circles, right? It doesn't have to be recessed. I mean, we can just sort of tap these circles as well and it should flow around that has that capillary action right and when we sort of do the clean up stage we'll get rid of any nasty blobs or anything like that later right as well as you can make other effects with it also just touch in if you want you can just brush across if you can get the capillary action going nicely, it does a lot of the work for you. Okay, just a little bit more of this. And you're gonna to wanna to let it dry for a bit as well. Because there will be a clean up stage with this and if you kind of cleaned it up now you'll just wash it clean it all out of the recesses and we don't want that all right i'm just going to give this a quick clean so i'm going to just get me um odorless thinners quick sort of dip and then just clean it off just for a color change Feel free to get any questions and answers in if you want to. All right, and then what I'm going to show you is doing a lighter color also. All right, just to show you the different sort of effect with that. All right, again, I'm using 1601 by MIG, giving it a good, good shake, as you can probably hear. There we go. They do sediment on the bottom a bit. Get the lid off. Right, um, I haven't actually tested this colour, but it is a good idea to sort of test your colours and see how they go. But hopefully this will be a good match. And you could probably see the capillary action just going on just there. I've just touched that in the middle and that has just flowed lovely. All right, so I'll just show you a little bit more, just touching the recess. And it should do the work for you. As you can see, just a little touch. Oops, maybe not a big touch like that. But I suppose you could probably see how it flows more with a big touch, actually. There you go. Just touch it. And it flows, which is what's really good about this stuff. Here we go. So I've just done that underneath, and hopefully you can sort of see that that's going to sort of, um, although we kind of go in opposite colours here, with like you know going from something that was dark on top, like the deep brown to grey, but it works well with black um, paintwork. So if we just sort of 
jump back up here. In fact, I wouldn't mind letting that dry a little bit longer, to be fair. Enamels do take um, a, a sort of a long time to dry, but um, what you've got to sort of remember is they do take a long time to dry, but what you need to keep in mind is if we kind of clean this up too quick, we're going to clean out all our work that we put into the um, recess panel lines. Um, but if we leave it too long to dry, the enamel, like say if we left it overnight to dry, the enamel paint would be then like fully dry and then it would be harder to wipe it away um, to get up any sort of mistakes or play around with it. You kind of want to give it maybe half an hour for it to just be um, not wet, but almost like you kind of touch it and it sort of smudges um so that um it's it, it's sort of generally kind of dry-ish and you're just sort of rehydrating it and removing uh, removing um the messy bits all right also um because we've had a gloss coat put on top of this it's going to help with this next stage because um it stops the enamel from biting down into the paintwork um, but because it, we've got gloss on top of it, it's just going to slide off really nicely. So it is important to have that gloss coat. Now that's potentially not as dry as I'd like it to be, but we're going to give it a go anyway. Just getting out a cotton wool bud, right, just like so. And we're going to sort of clean up these little blotches where we've been doing the pin wash. And we want to just leave it, um, leave behind... The enamel paint in the recesses and nowhere else. So getting out the enamel odorless thinners. All right, I'm going to dip our cotton wool bud into there. Now that's probably got too much odorless thinners on there. So I'm going to, on the kitchen paper towel, just roll it on the kitchen paper towel so as this is now sort of damp and not too wet. Right, and then what we can do is if we go in the direction of flow, right, I'm just going to sort of wipe off these little sort of bulges, these little mistakes. Right, so we're just sort of left with the recesses nicely sort of filled in. I mean, don't worry if you do sort of accidentally sort of wipe too much and you wipe away the enamel out of the recess panel lines because you can just come along and reapply that's the beauty about enamel paints they're so easily wiped up clean that um you know if you do make mistakes well you just wipe it up or you reapply right I'm just trying to get into this corner here and around here. All right, and hopefully you could sort of see, you know, that's been sort of cleaned up, but at the same time, you know, we have um, sort of brought out that detail. You know, compared to this side, this side, the detail sort of coming to the foreground, that, that recess panel lines, it just brings it out gives it that little bit more sort of detail and shows off, as I say, all the lovely detail, right? Um, now we've only done a little bit, but what you'll find is, is over time, your, um, your um, cotton wool bud builds up with more and more sort of paint, as you can see, I'm cleaning it off. So, you know, you're gonna wanna sort of change your cotton wool bud over time, but, it does kind of work to your favor, right? So I'm just, for an example here, I'm just gonna load up my um, cotton wool bud, all right? Because over time, your cotton wool bud is gonna get loaded up with this stuff, all right? As you're wiping it away. But then you kind of end up sort of making little streaks. All right, it, it is hard to see on camera, but these little streaks are absolutely gorgeous when you look close up on a model, because you're just streaking it across, and you just ended up with these just random 
dirt streaks just going all the way down and it just gives your surface detail so much extra flavor as i say they are so so faint right but it is something that you kind of just build up over time as you're wiping away your um wiping away the, the mess from the recessed panel lines i'm trying to sort of recreate this here Right. You might be able to just see some minor streaks just going on there. They are so so minor, but I, I do like them. Um, it's hard. It is hard to show you on camera, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but it's these these little streaks that just they're just so lightly there, and um, it's kind of strange because when we actually go off and put a matte coat on top of this, it does bring them out a bit, and then you start to see them, and it just looks like these lovely sort of dirty streaks just all the way across, and it just gives the surface detail so much extra oomph to it. I really do do like that. Um, so that's your um, sort of pin wash that you can do. Um, admittedly, this model hardly has any sort of recessed panel lines or anything on, on it, so um, it, there's not much to really show in that sense. We do have our underside here. I'm just going to clean these up. In fact, you could probably see these that streaking thing I was on about a lot more. Because you see how I've just cleaned these little dots where we've um, done our pin wash? Because I'm like flicking it. We're ending up with these lovely little streaks, right? So by making those little mistakes with the pin wash, it's absolutely fine because you just end up with this gorgeous bit of sort of streaking to the weathering, which just, I think, just kind of really sort of makes a model look more professional. All right, so hopefully you're sort of, you're liking that just there. Um, there is a, um, a bit more I could probably show you, but we are sort of coming to um, the end as the, the hours come. So I'm basically going to get this ready for next week. So you can basically expect, um, zoom you out, basically expect um, we're going to have all that pin wash going on. We should have our engines on. Um, you might notice as well, I haven't been able to do the black spray on these because um, the engine cowls can only go down once you've got the engine in and I hadn't had the engine ready when I did the spraying so um, I'm gonna have to sort of get them on mask it up spray them black um, do all the little bits and bobs get my wheels on um, and all this kind of cool stuff we'll probably maybe touch up a little bit more on some more weathering that we can do um, on this model, followed by the, the absolutely lovely bit that I like, which is going to be like the final matte coat. And then there's just going to be those last tiny little things just to just to finish finish this off. So then we'll hopefully we'll, we'll be starting a new model, um, probably sometime January. Um, but next week we're going to be having that Christmas special. We're going to be working on this as well as those Christmas prizes. Um, so just checking any last um, questions and answers, which um, you are very talkative in the chat, but you haven't got any questions this week. So hopefully you'll have some for us next week. So let's bring you back with the face cam. Um, so there you go. That is the 11th Genesis Models live session. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and learned a few things here. Um, it is nice to sort of see this come into life because, I mean, we've got all that spray work. We've got the decal down. Um, and I'll finish up the little bits of weathering on there, and this will be really sort of coming to life rather, rather nicely. Um, so hopefully you have enjoyed that. Sadly, we have come to the end of this live session, but I hope to definitely see you next week for our Christmas special live. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing over the Christmas period, but I do want to get some stuff up for, for you guys for that. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. So until next time, my name is Bob Wardrin. This is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.